to you about 30 years ago, I built this house and I wanted to start a cabinet business and I had a manufacturing business which I sold and so I made this little workshop down here. I didn't want a real big shop, I just wanted to, I worked myself on it and so over time I built lots and lots and maybe hundreds of cabinets on here. But this workbench, I needed, the first thing I needed, I had already a bunch of tools and saws and stuff like that, but I needed a halfway decent workbench. So what I, all I had was some t stuff laying, left over from the house, some two, <coughs> two by sixes and two by fours. So I just put them together, made more or less like a table, a solid table with two by fours, uh, two by sixes on the top. And then later on I added, I added a tool drop in here and I added some drawers. And I put a, over the tip, two by fours, I just put a flat pl three quarter inch plywood so I could clamp real easy to the edge of it. And then it just kept going. And it's been like this for probably about 25 years now I've been using it. And, but I wanted to, and it's worked real well. I've made hundreds of cabinets with it and everything is real handy to work with. Okay, about the same time when I started my cabinet shop there, I started going out on mission trips all over the world building cabinets and stuff for missions. Sometimes I built schools and houses and a lot of things, but mostly cabinets was. But I needed a workbench, because when I got there, there was nothing there. It's hard to work on a table. So I designed a small workbench here. It's just, uh, it was about six feet long, about the same size as these here. But it made a half inch plywood, and it was very, I could assemble one together in probably about, about a half a day, maybe, maybe six, eight hours. Anyhow, then I had a nice bench there, but the beauty part of it, when I leave, the missionary's got a nice bench to work on, so I would leave it there. And then there's, here's one, here's one here I made in Belize. This is for a school I had here. So I made the same things, a half inch plywood, and uh, I left it there. They actually made about three more, and they're running a school there. Now they build all kinds of cabinets. And here's one I made in Belize. We didn't have any plywood, so I just made it out of regular lumber. So these are real easy to make, but they're very simple. They don't have all the w bells and whistles as the one I've got behind me, which we're gonna show you now. Okay, I just want to show you, we, I tried to make use of every corner. There was a box here that I said for your tools, you don't use very often, sit on top. But I actually made a drawer there, and this drawer goes all the way through. And just put your stuff there. And then around the front here, we have two, two drawers here. Here's one here, just I'll put on my screws. But now these drawers go all the way through. And they open two to the other side there. You can see them coming out that side. And they're very shallow. You don't need them very deep. You only want them about two inches deep because when you put stuff in there, otherwise you get, it goes down and you're piling stuff on top of it. And this is, I don't have any, this is, I put all my clamps in here. And that again goes all the way through. Okay, this is nice for long clamps like this it actually opens up to the other direction so you can get the clamp out from either direction. And here's where I leave my Craig jig. I just put my Craig jig in here and store it in here. And these are nothing but old foam pads, but I glue two together and they're nice for here when you're paint spraying or something on my turntable, I can lay them on there, just little hold-ups. And that's all stored in here, but when I don't need it, I just close it. And it's not laying over there or over there or over there. It's right there. I know right where to find it. And then on this other end here, the same drawer comes out this end, and that's a beautiful place for long clamps. And then we have the we have the sh shelf underneath here. Put all the tools you're using all the time. They're all right handy, right handy. You can reach them. And I have a plug mold here. You can plug them in right there. And I have all my stuff real, I can get at everything real fast. I've got my glue here, my cleaner here, and my sander, I got a little place for it. Drill, got it in a little holster like the old cowboys had it. And everything is real handy. I don't be walking all over the place. Best things on this bench is this tool drop. All these small tools here. I got a little box for my screwdriver bits, my, my drills. But everything's right there, and if you get working on them here and you got stuff all over the place here, you know, you're working on it, but you're going to need something flat, take a minute, throw it in. And then sometimes it gets full of dust, but what I do there is I have this screen here. I just lay this on top of here and take my vacuum cleaner and just vacuum all the dust out of there. 
But if you don't have this, where do you have these tools? Where do you have these drill bits? Do you have them on a shelf over here? Where's that screwdriver? Where do you have that hammer? Where do you have it? Is it on a shelf over here someplace or over there? You're always looking for it. This way I can stand right here. Maybe I'm lazy, but I like to just stand here and have you reach almost everything I want without moving around. It saves a lot of time, especially if you're making cabinets to sell them. You don't want to waste any time with it. So that's a very, very important thing. Very, very few tool workbenches I've ever seen have that. And if you get a lot of tools there, you go through here and look, well, I haven't used this for a week. I'll put that out here. I haven't used that for a month. This I never use. I don't need it in there. See? But everything is all right there. You have pencils in there, and black markers. You always need a lot of black markers. When I go on mission trips, I always take a lot of them along, and I never end up getting any back because everybody likes to steal them from me because they love them so much. So I just leave them there. And, but this is like this is a, without this on a workbench, it's almost impossible to really do anything. You got just a big mess. Okay, now here's a sandpaper cleaner for sanding belts. They make them with a board you can screw them right to the bench. But you don't have to hold them, all you do is go like this. And in about a few seconds your sandpaper is just like new. And it very seldom wears out, it just always clogs up. And you can actually take your orbital sander, and orbital sander can be cleaned off too. Do the same thing like that. Now, where to get that thing? This is what it's called, and you can buy it on Amazon. Just go into Amazon, put that number in there, it'll pop up, and I think it's $13 it costs. Screw it onto your bench, and that's the best thing you ever, it la this has been on this bench probably about five years now. It just doesn't last for a long, long time. You know, right here, my glue bottle. You know, your glue bottle, you get it, it always tips over like that on the bench, but I have a little place for it. But this glue bottle, it's called a, a baby bot. And if you don't have one of these, get them because I use it all the time and it's the best thing. And you can buy again on Amazon. Just go to baby bot glue bottle. You don't even need a number or anything. And th this is a four ounce one. That's the best size. You get the bigger ones and I had trouble with the tops. They don't seal up as good. But this is all you need. Just keep refilling it. And I've used them for years now. Everybody's using them. They're all over YouTube. Everybody likes them. See, now I need my drill in a hurry. It is not laying there. I got it right there. You know, I can use it and drop it right back in there. And this is nothing but a plastic container. It's a round container. I just put a piece of metal around there and the drill just pops in it real nice and holds it. It's always, always there when you want it. You don't have to have it laying here because it, just to drop it down, it's just as easy to go over here and drop in a holster and you got it for your next turn. Okay, what I want to show you on this bench here is the way I've got the legs, legs designed. They're tapered. They come up here. So up here, you got about six inches of a leg to screw this stuff into. And you can screw it on this one here. So you got both directions. So if you take this bench, there's no movement whatsoever. To, I, you see, I can slide it down. But I cannot make that thing wiggle. And I come this way too. It's as strong as you can possibly get it. I mean, it's, it's solid. It's like a solid brick sitting here. And that's what makes it nice. There's no wobble to it or nothing. And it's all three quarter inch plywood. There's a, it takes about two sheets of three quarter inch plywood, a half a sheet of half inch plywood, and one sheet of quarter inch plywood for some of these pieces and bottom of the drawers and stuff like that. That's all it takes to build the whole thing. And I have the plans for it. I'll be selling the plans on, on my website. And it shows you in, in real detail exactly how to cut each piece and how to put it all together. Okay, this top is just three quarter inch. You can replace that any. This is all battered up and all full of holes and scratched up and that. You could take it right off and put a new piece on there. Okay, this is my Craig jig. I usually store it in that drawer right down there. I'm gonna bring it up here and just clamp it now. This one you're seeing here, you might not see this one because they don't make it anymore, but it's it's got an air cylinder and it's got a little foot pedal here and it's the most handy one I ever had. And I just don't understand why they don't make it anymore. They always got the one here but it takes two hands. But here I can operate my foot. Just hit that, drill the holes, hit that. And then I also have one like this which 
just a small one. Sometimes I get something that's too tall to hit there, so I just use this one. This one here, just take it on your piece of wood and uh, just clamp it on. And just put it right on your, on your wood here and then just take a clamp like this. This is what's nice about this three quarter inch plywood and having this inch and a half overhang here. You always got this uh, option to clamp all, all the way around here thing. You get You can clamp that like that real easy, drill your holes in there, take the clamp off and go to the next one. Okay, I'm going to show you some uses for this vise here. One is, I make use of these drawers right here because I got a 2x4, lay that 2x4 on there, and I can take a long board like this, set it on there, drop it into the vise, and turn it on. It's not going to fall up and down. And you can sand on here, whatever you want, or out the edges, or whatever it is. If you got a long board that's eight feet long, no, no problem. It's still set there. Ten feet long will go. Okay, this is a, for making biscuits, a biscuit joint. So I'm going to make, uh, show you how to clamp these here for biscuits, real nice. So I got just a three-quarter inch board here, and I want to cut biscuits in here. Let's see, I need some place for this machine to lay on here, and it's going to lay on there. So it's, I need, I want it nice and flat there, then I can push it right through, but this board's going to move all over the place. So that's why I got these holes in here. I just simply take a clamp here, put a clamp either in that hole or put it right on the end here. Now I can push these biscuits. See, I, I, I can't push that board. And that's going to stay there. Okay, one, two seconds and his clamps are off. I can set the board here and take my next one and you keep on going. Now if you got a 2 by 6 you want to do the same thing with a 2 by 6 or a 2 an inch and a half thing. You have to do some adjusting on here but here you can just take a clamp like this. Again I got these holes right here. And we're going to put it right in this one here. Or you can bring it out to the end and clamp it on the end. But that's why this is so versatile for clamping. I got all these holes here on either side and the outside. That's not going to move. Okay, that's for biscuits. Okay, where I store this biscuit, I, I use it very seldom, so I just store it on this shelf up on top here. I know where it is all the time, and I got even here. I've got a drill which I don't use very often. I'll set that up there. The tools I don't use very often are sometimes they fit right up there. You, can, you don't have to, they're right handy, but still they're not getting in your way. Okay, these clamps like this are about the most wonderful thing anybody ever invented. Now here's, here's a door. I've got to sand all these corners off here, but I can just take these here and clamp them on here. If I clamp this over here a little bit like this, that door is going to sit nice and solid. So I can take and sand all these corners off real nice like this, all four corners. And in a few seconds I can take these clamps off, stick another door in there. Clamp it on. That's why this overhang like this, that's perfect. And if you don't have that overhang on a bench like that, just take a piece of plywood on your bench you got now and screw it on there and let it hang over three inch and a half. And you've got a bench just like this. You know, here you can go and get all four corners again. Okay, here's the beauty of having this three quarter inch top on here. You don't have to be afraid to put a screw in it. My tool bench downstairs, if you notice that. It's just full of screws. I had to replace it one time. But I can screw this in here now. Now I've got a mini router table here. It's like that. And it's a lot easier to do small pieces like this than it is to 
take that rod and run it across there. But if you're scared to drill a hole in your bench, well then you're out of luck with this system. And you want to go on it on there, just take it off. Okay, this here, some this is a bench, a, a, a vice dog. Some of them have it on there, you just raise it up and down. Mine didn't, so I just cut a hole in there. But what you do, you've got a board like this, you want to sand it. You can take the piece of plywood like this or take some other pieces. Then again, your little nice handy clamps. Clamp it on there. It's plenty solid enough for working on it. But these clamps just hold so much and they're so handy and so fast to use and they're so cheap. I think you, pay, you can get them for about three dollars a piece and they last for a lifetime. Okay, I cut these little slots in here so you can get clamps in there, but if you want more though, you can put more in here, you know, you don't have to go just with that. And you can add, add more in there as you're making it. If you want, you can add them after it's done, but you have to take the top off here and take your skill saw and go in there and cut them out. But I find that this has usually been adequate enough. Most of your work is going to be on one side of the bench, but I always like to be, have a bench that I can walk and work on all sides of it, all the way around. A bench up against the wall, you only got a half a bench that way. Okay, you got a cord here like this. Well, usually you're tempted to you know, wind it up like this, you know. Well, that's fine. I do it all the time. If you get to the end of it there, uh, what do I do at that end? I try to stick it under here, and it, but I found these little bungee cords, which I got at Walmart. There's mini bungee cords, they call them. I put it in this hole right here. Come around this side here, and put it in this other hole. And there it is. I do it all my tools, especially in a in a truck, and then it'll get all, otherwise you get a whole kind of cords hanging all over the place. It's just little bungee cord, they call them, okay, they're just called mini bungee cords. There you get 20, I think it's 20, 20 in a box, I mean a, can, a, a cup, a, a jar like this, and they cost, at Walmart they cost about five dollars. But they're very handy, I use them all the time now. Okay, these are the plans that I'll be selling, the ultimate new generation workbench for hand and power tools. And it's all done on a, all the plant are all drawn on a computer and when I built, I built one of these benches and then I built the second one, this one here, after I redid the plans, made sure everything was, all the me measurements were verified and so this is built exactly to the plans and they all, all, all the measurements are correct on it. So here's what you get on a plan. You get a front front view of it and an end view. Then you get this is a four by eight sheet of plywood. You get all the whole layout, how to each one is laid out like that. And then uh, and here's the next sheet like this. So it'll probably be a little bit more than two. Here's a full sheet, full sheet here, and I think you had some of this is extra there but so it's a little over two sheets and then, and then here's a about a full sheet of half inch plywood not quite a half inch and then there's some quarter inch which in most cases is three sixteenths that's for the drawer bottoms and stuff like that and then here it just gives you some pictures of how I was assembling them and that and then here's I did this here actually and put on it so you know pretty much where I, each piece goes and that way you're finishing up and it's, so it's a very detailed plan and you can go on a website, the price is on the website. I didn't put the price on here because this video will be around a long time and prices change over the years.